Hello and welcome to Mission Nonprofit. I'm your host, Robert Kim. On Mission Nonprofit, we feature a local nonprofit organization from the Thurston County area. And this month, we're pleased to present the YWCA of Olympia. And with me to talk to you about the YWCA of Olympia is Tammy Stampfleet, and she is the new executive director as of February, a few mm -hmm. months ago, not too right. long. And so uh, welcome to the YWCA, but you're not new to Olympia. Right, You've, I've lived in Olympia for a while. Yep, it's and, and have time. you ever done work with the YWCA before? I had not. So, so it's really great to be at the Y, and I really embrace the mission of the Y, so it's wonderful to work on behalf of that mission. And the YWCA is uh, that building downtown, is it on Franklin? Is that where it is? Excellent question. That is our friends, the YMCA, oh, that's the YMCA. Okay. right? So we are on Union Street, on Union and Street, I always... Right? Uh, it's great that we're partners with them. We get calls all the time for when the uh, swim classes are and so forth. In fact, the other day I made a little sticky note with their number on it so I could quickly refer people to the YMCA. That's good. We have to do that with Comcast. A lot of people <laughs> call us thinking we're Comcast. So. That's great. But, right. um, so, yeah. So, yeah, we're different and um, also downtown. Okay. So what kind of uh, building is it? You, do you have workout spaces and stuff? A lot of people think of the YWCA as a place you go to work out. Right. So again, that would be our friends at the YMCA. Mm -hmm. But um, we have a beautiful old home, a four square home. It was built in 1908 and it's on Union Street. And uh, it was, you know, owned by the Kearney family at one point. And then we, we bought it in 1948 and started our work there in 1948. And it still stands. It looks kind of funny on the street because this is big old four square house in the middle of some larger commercial buildings. But yeah, we're there a little different carriage from house. what I was envisioning the YWCA to be, but I'm sure the YWCA is a lot more than I thought it was. Yeah, Apparently no, after do doing a little bit of research and looking at your website and stuff. You do a lot of good stuff. And, and you just came back from the National YWCA Conference. Right. Where they were talking about changing the YWCA. Right. So in, in, we all met up in Washington, D.C. So um, actually for a number of decades, the Y has been a national organization. At first, actually the Y first started, the YWCA first started in like the 1850s in London. And it was kind of when a a women's prayer group and a social action group decided to come together to try to do things on behalf of women. And then it started, you know, in the United States. Um, and then throughout its time, it's kind of been on the leading edge of social action. So, um, you know, in the 30s, the YWCA worked for um, eight-hour workdays for people and time off and workers' rights. And then when we kind of moved into the civil, era, civil rights era, the Y was kind of the leading edge of that. Um, so the YWCA uh, worked to end the, the separation um, between races, even back then. So they, they weren't allowed to have two separate Ys. The Ys always were integrated, and it was a national prerogative that it was integrated. Um, so yeah, so it's always been national. I'd say, I might get this wrong, but about 20 years ago it became regional. And folks worked in more regions to deal with what was in their regions. And it, it became clear in time that we needed to um, kind of be re-strengthened as a national organization so that we could uh, get a lot more of our advocacy and policy work done on a national basis. So we've just switched over this last January to being a national organization and hopefully can use our strength um, as different associations in the nation to forward our, to forward our advocacy work. And, and I read something about a bill that I guess the YWCA is uh, trying to to get passed. Uh, the was it a? Can you help me with so it? So Violence Against Women Vi Act was one go. of VAWA. our VAWA, one of VAWA. our VAWA. three priorities, okay. and it was finally passed by Congress, and we're really it really pleased done. about that. It's well, done. Congratulations! Yay! Um, and then. Uh, the next priority is the immigration reform bill. And so when I was in D.C., we had the opportunity to lobby our Congress folk and had the chance to meet with Denny Heck and had the chance to, to meet with um, Cantwell's staff. And um, we just had a great time explaining why we're really in favor of immigration reform and really pleased that that has passed the Senate. And so now we're hoping that the House will uh, pass a similar piece of legislation and move that along. I had no idea that the YWCA would be involved in immigration reform. That's right. very interesting. And then our third priority is uh, to have a fair federal budget for, um, 
for all people. Uh, we obviously are looking, we're always looking out for people of color and we're looking out for the poor. And so we'd like to see a national budget that reflects those priorities. So that's kind of where we're putting all of our um, advocacy energy right now. And local associations are also trying to help work on that and contact, you know, our organize our folks locally and then contact our Congress folk to try to move those items along. And you were talking about back in the 30s and what the YWCA did back in the right. 30s. Were they uh, helpful of getting uh, women the right to vote? Wasn't that... Uh, they, the they worked really hard on lots of fronts. Uh, a big one was mm -hmm. on labor reform. Um, okay. And then when they first started opening sort of local offices and houses, they were often boarding houses or places for women to, to live that, you know, it was, wasn't okay for, I guess, women to live on their own. So they had those opportunities. And our own house at first was a boarding house for women. So, um, but... You mean the house, house, the house that on the Union? YWCA right. is in now? Yep. Interesting. Yeah, so over the years, as we adapt to the needs of uh, culture and the, needs, the changing needs of women, we've adapted what we do. Um, so most of our associations have given up on their pools and their workout rooms. Not that that's not important, but wanting to put a lot more energy into, we do a lot of programs nationally um, and around the country with domestic violence, programs for children, programs for the poor, um, that sort of thing. So I had no idea that it was going that direction. You always yeah. think of a place you go work out. <laughs> yeah. place, I mean, you, we might not have the workout facilities here, but other cities across the country, they their YWCAs is a place you go work out and go swimming and stuff, am I right? It it's still... really has changed a lot, okay. yeah, pretty much. Pretty much all wives have gone to services for the poor and services for women and mm -hmm. services for people of color. So it's been a big change. And uh, folks, if they're hanging out of their pools, it's usually because it's a it's a really important thing for the community and uh -huh. they don't have any other access. So, but I would say nationally that that um, has become less a priority. Interesting. So they probably won't be building new, uh, you know, gyms and stuff, or, or they, they might do a little bit, but, but they're, they're going in a different direction. Right. They're going towards uh, social reform. Right, and it, mm -hmm. I really, yes, and always have been. Yeah, the YWCA has always been about social reform. It's just you don't think of it that way, right? And that's why I guess we need to get the word out. Yeah, we do. We need <laughs> so. to talk to people. We need to tell them they need to go to your website because uh, that's the best way to get in contact with you guys, and that is ywcaofolympia.org. Correct. So if you wanted to learn more and if they wanted to volunteer, you have a place for we them do. to volunteer and donate. And if there are young girls that uh, needed a place for after school care or summer camps and stuff, you have all that stuff. Well, I'd love to talk about our girls' programs. So Let's we have, do that. yeah, we have so. a couple of um, girls' programs that are just absolutely wonderful. So right now, even as we speak, our um, Girls Without Limits camp is going on. We have a couple of camps in the summer. We have Saturday camps. We have spring break camp. We're probably going to offer a winter camp this year. But it focuses in the STEM activities, so science, technology, engineering, and math, where girls are typically kind of you know not fostered along as as we foster our boys along in those particular subjects so that's one of our um, one of the things that we think is really important so it's really great because we have you know women that are in those fields coming along and mentoring the girls and then exposing them to opportunities in fact they are coming to TCTV to yes to I know it's around a field and, trip on Friday I know and, yeah. and learn more about this technology and so uh -huh. We're excited about that. Well, so we, we are too. We also have Girls Circle, which meets in 14 schools throughout Thurston County. And it's um, girls meeting together um, after school with our Girls Circle facilitators and hopefully gaining some resiliency and some kind of strength in their own voice and um, making connections with other girls, ultimately so that they can be strengthened to avoid intimate partner violence um, down the road. So kind of catching them early in middle school so that later on they're stronger women. So those are a couple of our girls' programs. Yeah, and, and that just uh, reminded me of, of some PSAs that you guys have made, the, the violence in uh, relationships. Right. And we're talking about uh, uh, preteens and, and, and teens. We're talking, well, we're talking about middle, middle school age girls mostly. Is that right. kind of what uh, your focus is? Right. I mean, we have one of our girls' circles at a high school, but mm -hmm. we do mostly middle school middle girls. School. Mm -hmm. And in the particular one that you're mentioning, um, it was at our Technically Speaking uh, Spring Break Camp, and we partnered with our community partner, Together, who um, mm -hmm. is one of our friends in the community we work with. 
And um, the girls produced these PSAs. And um, they also worked with, um, so together had actually some boys through one of their programs participate. And so you get a little bit from both gender, which is pretty neat. So already getting them to start thinking about healthy relationships and mm -hmm. maybe in the future healthy dating relationships. And getting the girls to make a video. That's and, what we like. Yes, absolutely. We're all about that. Yeah. We love to make, help people make videos and then show people the videos that people have made. So why don't we show uh, the audience out there a couple of these promos that you guys did in a spring break camp. How great. exciting. Thank you, so that'd be the, great. The spring break camp and they, they, they spent the week working on these PSAs. And they did. That sounds like a blast. So why don't we take a look at them? We'll come back and, and talk more. Thank about you. The YWCA. All right. Okay, we'll be right back. A healthy relationship looks like for someone my age is someone who respects me and stands up for me and listens to me. People need to be equal and both of them need to be a part of something that create a whole basically. A relationship should be mostly based off of mutual respect where the two people, you know, they're they like who each other are and they respect what they do and they enjoy the people for who they are and who they want to be. And they'll try and help them get to that place. Hi, welcome back to Mission Nonprofit. I'm your host, Robert Cam. And this month on Mission Nonprofit, we're featuring the YWCA of Olympia. And you just saw a couple of PSAs produced by girls in a spring break camp. And uh, Tammy Stampfleet is with me. She's the executive director. And so that, those were great uh, little PSAs about uh, healthy relationships right. for girls. For, right. and, and these are middle school girls. And they made this, that, that's so cool. They made those themselves with together. Right. So, and, and so how many girls are in those camps? So we have about 20. Mm -hmm. um, each wow, camp, so big. we have yeah camp going on now and uh, spring break. You had to just go down there; it was crazy. In our we have a girls you know club room in our house and full of girls and mm -hmm. lots of uh, they you know they wrote their own storyboards. They figured out how to do it and they were taught each step along the way um, how to make a video, how to come up with their story, how to edit and so forth. So they were really proud of their work and they should be so. So who taught them all that? They're, you guys had your own people? Or you brought people We in? had our own people um, yeah. together. Um, together certainly near, has near a lot of technolo technological background. Uh -huh. And then your staff, of course, was also helpful. So yeah, it was they were guided along the way, and it was great. So. Yeah, I know we've done some work with together. So maybe some of the things we taught them rubbed off. <laughs> That's right. good. That's good. So yeah, good messages. And, and so you, you've got those camps going on all summer, and, and then spring break, and in the winter. Right. And that, that's called the Girls Without Limits program. Right. Okay. 
Girls, and uh, this week, I guess their their focus is um, on the environment, and so we have a women's panel coming on Thursday, and the girls will get to interact with women who work in the field, find out more about it, and then they're again going to be producing some videos and doing oh, some of their good. own work again this week. Yeah, well, awesome. I hope you'll send us those videos, and Great. we can put them on TCTV. Wonderful. All right. Um, so those are all held at your facility, right? Downtown. Right. Okay. We have a girls club house uh -huh. in our basement which is actually quite beautiful and very kid friendly so. and that's the the camps in the summer and in spring break and in the winter quarter right. when, when school's out and then we again have saturdays as well for saturday camps oh is that yeah. like year round uh-huh oh, wow. so monthly so that the girls can come and continue to work in those areas the so stem activities so yeah. once a month on a saturday so right. they, they can still do it during the school year right but and then you also have the girls circle which is during the school year Right, and Girl Circle, as I mentioned, meets in 14 different schools, and we have wonderful trained Girl Circle facilitators that are part of our staff that go into schools and um, do the different activities with the girls every week. And um, the girls, they love it. It's really important to them. Um, this last quarter or whatever, the things like the Queen of My Body was one of their favorite um, daily lessons. Just again, learning how to value themselves, mm -hmm. learning how to find their own voice, um, learning how to speak up for themselves. It's and that's really important, important for young girls it these is. days. They have so much pressure from, right. you know, all these images in the media of the perfect, oh gosh, don't get me started on that. But right, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah. I'm glad that you counteract some of that. Somebody needs to because it's just, yeah, too much pressure. Too I'm much glad we're to doing it too. To. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's through the Office of Women's Health. Um, it's a grant, again, to try to, you know, intimate partner violence is a real problem mm -hmm. in our county. And so the Office of Women's Health felt really strongly that this is something we need to address and again try to catch girls when they're young and could start having kind of a stronger sense of who they are and maybe avoid those situations in the future. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And the videos you're making uh, this summer, are they, are they about the same? So, right now they're concepts? working, right now at uh, Girls Without Limits Camp, they're working on the environment. Okay. So, again, we're always doing different things they, mm -hmm. at the camp too. They, they take a lot of field trips and they go and look at um, places like DigiPen, you know, places where they can look like, at future careers in technology oh, and, and other sciences, so. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so these this girl's circle, that's the after school care. Uh, or right, not, not really or care, it care but right? It's a the after school program. It's a group for girls. Group. Okay, right. And they, but it happens at their school. It does happen. So they at just their stay school. at school, go to a, a certain room or right. something, and and there's somebody from the Girl Scouts there. The girls circle facilitators. I'm sorry, I said Girl Scouts. I meant YWCA. Right. Okay, right. so there's somebody from the YWCA at uh, in, in the room where one of our meeting. staffers, right, who gotcha. has training. So okay. yeah, so. <laughs> It, lots of positive feedback about that. This next year, we are um, wanting to uh, particularly study and address, I don't know if you're familiar with the ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences, um, and there are a number of those, and actually Thurston County is the third highest of people who've experienced ACEs. So it's again, you know, things like childhood traumas, like um, everything from uh, suicide of a family member or divorce or abuse or whatever. Um, we actually have a lot of people in Thurston County who've suffered with that. So one of the things in particular we want to look at in Girls Circle in this next year is um, thinking about how to address that and how to, again, make girls more resilient in the face of uh, childhood trauma and things mm -hmm. that they may have dealt with. So. Are these, this is all free programs? Yes, it's, it's oh um, well, the camps, we, there is a fee, okay. but we also don't turn anyone away. So a lot of the girls are scholarshiped, and gotcha. um, we have some very generous funders who take care of the scholarships. And, and you do, you help out uh, people that are underprivileged uh, in other ways, too. Right? right, so the Other Bank program mm -hmm. is one of our programs that has been around since 1986, and it is in our carriage house next to our main big house. And folks come on Wednesdays and they can get all the kinds of um, supplies that you can't get with food stamps or um, get other places. So, Like the food bank. Right. This so is things, the other bank. This is the other bank. The so other things bank. like toilet paper and um, soap and laundry soap and personal care items and mm -hmm. so forth. So we have about 100, 150 folks a week come in um, needing that kind of assistance. 
Um, typically, I would say 77% of our families that come are female-led, so a lot of single parents taking care of the family. They have a family income of about $680 a month, Whoa. and about half of our clients are under 18, so a lot of children are helped through the other bank. Oh, so yeah, it's folks who are really, really in need of these extra mm -hmm. things. And so well, Yeah, because you can't get shampoo at the food bank, and you can't buy it with food stamps. Right. And so really important, um, and it's been a really good ongoing thing. One of the cool things that Other Bank did in the last few months was they offered a retreat. So we had our um, a wonderful Evergreen intern who organized that, and you know of course we all pitched in and helped. But um, so our Other Bank clients, these women I've talked about, came and the, the Baptist Church downtown hosted us, and um, it was organized for them to have you know haircuts, massages, um, fun crafts. Um, just things, relaxing and fun things to do for the day. So uh, board members brought salads and pizza, and it was a really nice day. That sounds great. The coolest thing about the end of the day, the women that were the clients, the participants said, hey, next time you have one of these, let us know because we want to help organize it. So it felt really exciting to see them say, hey, I can, I can make this happen for myself. Will so. you guys do that again? Yeah, absolutely. What was it called? What did you call it? It was yeah. a retreat. The retreat? Re a okay. retreat day for our other bank clients. So you think maybe you'll do it once a year? Or yeah, who like knows? That? Hopefully at least that, if not more. Yeah. So okay. it was really empowering for these women to have this opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So are, with the other bank, is it just women or are there men can go to the other bank too? Absolutely. Really? Okay. Absolutely. Women, men, families, children, yeah. anybody who needs it. It's for everybody. That's great. Every Wednesday. Every, every Wednesday. Wednesday at your facility. Right. Perfect. Yeah, so we're also in conversations with the Thurston County Food Bank exploring a partnership so that both of us can better serve our clients. A little at more one-stop shopping, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to hopefully exchange referrals. some of our items so that people can come to one place and offer different hours. Oh, that's a great yeah, idea. so that we can... You can have food and then they can have the others. Exactly. And so... Do a little swap. Yeah, Thurston County Food Bank, wonderful partner, and so we're looking forward to moving forward together with them. Uh -huh. so, yeah, so good things. Yeah, and, and there's a, something coming up that you guys are also doing uh, that's called the Women of Achievement, and this is a YWCA of Olympia thing. Right, a very exciting event. So um, it, it'll be in November, and our women are nominated to be a Women of Achievement recipient. So it's women in the community who've done a lot for the community in various and sundry ways. Um, and so they are selected and they are honored and um, it's an event we love and we look forward to. It's really powerful to be around people who've made such a difference in the life of our community and um, so we're really looking forward to that. Uh, I was mentioning that our national association kind of stole the idea from local associations. A lot of local associations honor women and um, had an opportunity to be part of that when I went to the national event that I mentioned. And the women there that were honored were also incredible. Um, women who have, uh, one woman um, who started this foundation called the Love Foundation who um, helps, as we were talking about girls in intimate partner violence, her daughter mm -hmm. was um, murdered by a boyfriend oh in college. Gosh. So she started a foundation and through that foundation has created some apps that uh, women, college women can download on their phone to either sort of figure out when they're in danger or reach out for help. Um, other women that were honored were women that you know do a lot of work on behalf of the poor, on behalf of um, underserved people groups. Um, so it was really, again, a powerful experience to see folks who work so hard on behalf of the community, whether that's nationally or locally. And we have a lot of people who do a lot. And it's great to have an opportunity to honor them. So we look forward to that in November. Yeah, and, and you, but you're accepting uh, the nominations now. And Absolutely. Is, Anybody can be nominated that's in Thurston County. Yeah, any woman in Thurston any County. Woman there in Thurston will be County. more information out on our website about how to do that. Uh -huh. and, and, so. and I remember the deadline was August 30th. So they got to get that in start, before August. Start clicking in, right? Yep, start doing it now. Yeah. And, and then, uh, the, but the, the event will take place in November, November 6th. Is that the date? Okay. So they can go to your website, which is ywcaofolympia.org. And they can, can they nominate there? Is there a link or something? Or yeah, should the, they just, it'll be there. So it they will, can okay. get the form. And, um, so, yeah, it's actually the 7th of November. Our okay, big November event. 7th. Yeah. But it'll, again, be on our website. And it'll be on the website. everyone can find out how to come and participate. It'll be a great, it's always a really heartwarming, really powerful event. How many women are chosen? 
Yeah. You know, different years have had different amounts of women, uh -huh. so we don't limit it necessarily, you know, depending on, but um, yeah, so. So you don't know. I don't know we'll yet. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how many, so, uh, how many women have achieved. There is a selection there committee, but, uh -huh. um, but we like to honor the ones that just stand out in their achievement in the community, so. And is this kind of like a luncheon thing? It's a dinner. It's a dinner. An elegant and evening. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So. Is it planned yet? Do you have the, the we are, location? Uh, we and are on the way. Yes. Okay. We are on the way with our planning on that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So just the awards. Do they receive something? And or they probably get maybe put on the website. Well, right. We honor them. We yeah. We give them an mm -hmm. award. We put them on the website. We mm -hmm. uh, do their biographies so nice. that everyone can see them um, Good. and hopefully be inspired by the work that they do. So, okay. yeah. So you can look on our website now and see some of our women of achievement. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. from the years past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, actually a more immediate event we have, we're actually in the midst of, it's um, an event that some of our sister associations do, but it's called In Their Shoes. Ooh. And so what we've done is we've um, posted some pictures of shoes of some of our clients, um, be they other bank clients or our girls clients, and some something about their story. And we're inviting our community members to kind of just take a moment and to sort of put on the shoes or walk in the shoes of someone whose life might be different than theirs. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> celebrate okay. that online. So again, <laughs> folks can come and p take a peek and see some of those stories about, um, about those, those people whose shoes that we should take a minute to Think about what their lives are like. So we have to wrap up now, but I just wanted to say uh, your website again, which is ywcaofolympia.org, and give you a final minute here to mention anything else that uh, you haven't talked about. And and I know people might want to go out there and go to your website and learn how they can volunteer and learn how they can donate and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, one of the things I'm most excited about is um, I've never been anywhere where volunteers just walk through the door. They literally just walk through the door and say, how can I help? Great. Um, and so that is really um, inspirational for the mm -hmm. rest of us who work there to have um, community members walk in and say, what can I do? And I think it speaks a lot about our community. We have um, very caring people in Thurston County. And um, we are also really honored with all the partners we work with um, in many venues, um, including TCTV. Yes, and but we love working with you guys too. Together so. and all of our mm -hmm. other many, many partners who are so kind and generous with their time. So, well, yeah. hope we do more in the future, and well, keep doing things together. So great. We'll wrap that up. Thank you so much for having us thank today. Thank you, Appreciate and welcome it very much. to uh, the YWCA of Olympia. So, well, thanks for tuning in. We will see you next month on Mission Nonprofit. Thanks for watching. If you know of a local nonprofit that's making a difference in our community, give us a call at 956 3100 extension 103 or send an email to rkam at tctv.net.